Hey, this is Andrew Brown over here at Exam Pro bringing you another video and this time we're talking about the top 10 most popular certifications that if you start at the top of the list and you go and obtain a good chunk of those ones, uh, when you get those on your resume and you hand them into the hiring manager and they see it, uh, it's going to be such a thirst trap of a resume that they are going to write you a big size novelty check for $250,000. Um, they're going to give you their office. Uh, they're going to feed you grapes. And if you cannot tell, I am being totally satirical. That is not going to happen whatsoever. Uh, and it's what I really want to talk about, which is how do we make sense of these top 10 lists, right? Because I've seen them over and over again. And I look at them and I go, why? Why is that the top certification? Um, and I didn't know at first before I made cloud certifications, but now that I've made so many cloud certifications and I have so much internal data, I can tell you why the list is the way it is and why you may not want to uh, use that list as a means to determine your learning path because that is my major concern here is that you don't know what you're doing and you're just trying to best optimize your uh, build for getting hired. And I'm not saying you're dumb. I'm just saying you're using the information that you have and I'm trying to give you better information. Um, so what am I talking about? Well, I'll show you the lists that I'm talking about, but I just want to talk about what's the number one certification I generally will see at the top of those lists. And I, and then I want to dispel as to why it's on the top of that list and why you would not follow it if you knew the reasons why behind it. And I would call this number one certification, um, uh, the piss cutter. And that's why I'm wearing this hat because I live in the small town of Scriber. Piss cutter is a local term. It's when something is really awesome. You say, that's a piss cutter. Um, if you want to know the origin of the word, it's not that interesting. It's very, uh, it's very much what you expect it to be. You can go look it up yourself. But the Google Cloud Professional Architect is the most piss cutter certification out there. And the reason why, why is this the most popular certification on top of the list? Uh, I didn't know this until we had our own pro GCP pro certification. And I saw who was buying this certification. Okay, the people that buy the certification the most are Google employees. Okay, and the reason why is because it's a requirement for their work, they have to get Google Pro Architect certified. And it's to the point where the, the ACE, which is the Google uh, Associate Certification Engineer or uh, Cloud Engineer Associate, which I think is a really good exam, gets skipped over just to go to the pro because they have to get that prof uh, professional. And so when you see these lists, these lists are based on data, based on companies about how much they sell of those certifications, right? They're compiling it based on how much traffic and stuff is being driven to them, but the context is lost as to why it, why there's a driving force behind it. And, you know, uh, you know, my reasoning or my thought based on the data that I have is that Google employees need to pass this certification like tremendously and their internal training does not cut it. And so they go out and they utilize third party providers like myself, Code Cloud whoever has the certification to pass uh, very, very quickly. Uh, and, you know, there's no secret that, uh, you know, the Coursera course by Google is lacking, um, you know, by Google, but um, uh, that's the primary driver of this being at the top of the list, in my opinion, um, based on my data. But, you know, if you ask people why is at the top, you get very superficial reasons, nothing drawn to uh, a real conclusion, but you know, I saw all of those like Google employees and it's majority Google employees. So, and this isn't to get the job at Google. This is you already have the job and then you go get it, right? And they probably even pay for it too. Um, so this is the thing that people have to understand is that, you know, there are driving forces behind these things. And if you are trying to land your role thinking, I'm gonna get the Google cl uh, Cloud Professional uh, Architect based on this information, you're missing that context, that it, that's not the reason why it's at the top. So that doesn't mean that certifications are bad. I think certifications um, serve a purpose. They provide structured learning. They put a goalpost at the end. But, 
you know, getting all the certifications does not guarantee you a job. Could it be something that might prevent you from obtaining a job? Possibly, but it's not going to be the deciding factor why you got the job. And that is a very important um, a difference. But what I want to do is I want to now cut over, just like in all my videos, I want to cut over and we'll take a look at these lists or the list that I saw that made me say, I got to talk about this because I'm just tired of seeing it. Okay, so I'll be back here in just a second, okay? All right, folks, so uh, we're over here on LinkedIn. I just want to show you the, you know, the source to which I started this conversation. It was because I saw CodeCloud, uh, Moonshot over at CodeCloud, the founder of CodeCloud, and he, and he was posting the top 10 cloud certifications. Now, I just want to point out, I don't feel that Moonshot is being disingenuous for making this list. Um, he runs a business. His purpose is to sell you um, training and, you know, you have to curate lists and put things together for people. So nothing wrong with that. I totally understand that. But uh, the list he has is what is the top 10, uh, uh, top 10 most in-demand certifications. And the top one here is Google Cloud Professional Cloud Architect. So that's the one I was talking about. One of the, the most commonly uh, landed pages that people end up on is probably uh, this one from IntelliPact because it ranks really high in Google. And they also say it's the Google Cloud a professional uh, architect. And that's great, but why is it the number one, right? And when you contextualize that, at least with what I'm telling you from what I know um, that I can verify as to be truthful is that it's because of that drive of Google employees. It's, um, and if you're basing it based on sales data or traffic or things like that, that's an issue, right? Because you have to have a better feeling for the industry than just those raw numbers, okay? Um, I think what's interesting, what uh, Pluralsight does is they look for the average salary. And so their indicator as to why, well, they're just saying it's the highest paying cloud certification. They're not saying it's the most popular, but you know they're taking normalized data and determining what that is. We don't have access to that data. So we don't know. So we have to take their word for it. Just as you have to take the word for me that I'm telling you that my sales are coming from Google employees. But um, I'm not saying that this is dishonest, but the thing is, is that how many jobs are asking for this, right? Like, what's the pool of numbers? Is it 10? Is it 1,000? You know, like, what is the ratios compared to this stuff? How is this stuff averaged out based on the data set that you have? And so there might be very few jobs that ask for this requirement or say nice to have, but you have to remember that that doesn't necessarily mean that you will get the job. It just means that, you know, they did some kind of research and they found out that it was asking for, uh, it was asking for that and they extrapolated out that salary, whether it was indirectly or whether that information was posted. Uh, you know, if, if we had here, and I don't think it's here, but if we had here like a compiled, <laughs> a compiled checklist or like a, sorry, a spreadsheet, then we could uh, better understand, you know, how is this data being delivered, Right. But as far as I can tell, and maybe it's just, I'm not good at finding information, I just don't see it. So they say they have a report. Give me two seconds, let's go dig into it. Right, right away, I click the first link, being like, oh, let's follow through the data. The, the link is broken. So I, I can't find the information for you. There's no way to verify this information. This is also 2021. Not that that's a huge factor. I don't think things swing that much per year. But you know, my point is, is that uh, this stuff is not as always as accurate as you think. And these state of cloud things, I've seen like the state of X report, and I'm not knocking on this one here, but I'm just saying that I've investigated, uh, you know, the state of cloud, the state of security, the state of whatever. And when you dig into it, they might use a reputable company that uh, uh, gathers the data. But when you can see the data that they're looking at, it, you can feel that it's very skewed, skewed because of of the available data or the biases to what story they want to tell. So, you know, just because a third party company is being used and they're supposedly reputable, make sure you can source your data. Uh, I know this sounds very hypocritical because I'm saying, hey, I'm telling you why this one's number one. And it's not because of the reason why you think there, but I'm just saying that um, I'm not making claims that says you should go get this one. I'm not making claims that this is the most popular one. I'm just dispelling saying, hey, think twice about it and, you know, use your brain and and put some time and energy and think about, you know, you know, why, why is it this way? 
and do your research. And if you can't find the answers, well, <laughs> there, there's probably a, there's there's probably something that's missing here, right? So, you know, hopefully that gives you a, a better opportunity to uh, investigate there. But let's just take a look at the list. I have a few other ones open, but this one is has a Google Cloud Professional Cloud Architect, and it says updated June twenty third. So like periodically, this is a way to keep yourself ranked high in uh, uh, Google as you just keep updating it every year. But this list has been around a long time and I don't know if it's really ever changed. Um, I guess one way we could test is by going to archive.org and that might be fun to do. But before we do that, let's just go through here and see how these lists vary. So the first here is Google Cloud Professional Architect, Azure Fundamentals, uh, Solution Architect Expert, Azure, Google Pro, uh, Data Engineer, AWS, 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 CompTIA Cloud Plus, um, CCSB, okay? We go to the next one here. This is on Coursera, which is interesting because I think, does Coursera, does Google, does Google own Coursera? I always forget. Uh, Coursera is not part of Google or Alphabet. I think it's um, by Andrew NG, Andrew NG's uh, platform. Coursera. I have a feeling, I don't know why, I just think Andrew NG has some kind of dealings with Coursera, I totally forget. But anyway, we're getting kind of onto a sidebar there. Um, it's interesting to see that they list the AWS associate first. I can tell you that one, that is super popular. Um, in terms of where I don't see people usually getting the job is this certification. This certification, so many people have it, right? So many people fake their way to get this exam, that this is the one that probably is the most useless to get. Um, I'm not saying that the knowledge gained in here is not worth it. I'm just saying that as a uh, as a checkbox on your resume, it becomes very much like, so what? Everybody has this one. Um, the next one is Azure Fundamentals. That one is definitely a popular one. Um, the AZ-104 is very, very hard compared to the uh, AWS Associate. And so, you know, I understand why this one is so darn popular because <laughs> you want an easy win, right? They put the ace on third. I don't really agree with that. I see a lot of people skipping the ace and going to the pro. Um, but in terms of value, I think this list is good. Like I think this is AWS's most valuable certification, like knowledge wise, right? I think Azure Fundamentals is the most valuable certification uh, Microsoft wise. It's not hard, but I definitely think it's the most valuable um, at, at versus the effort to get. And then Google Cloud Associate, uh, 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 Cloud Engineer Associate, I think this one is an amazing certification and it gets overlooked often because of that drive to go to pro. Often people just skip right over this one. Um, IBM, don't think so. CCSK, I think that's an excellent um, security uh, fundamental certification. This one, again, I'm not that huge in the security space as some of my other friends are, but um, you know, the security space for fundamental certifications is kind of split because their approach to these certifications are all really, really different. Um, so actually, I think Coursera's list is pretty good. The IBM one is kind of unusual. I don't really understand as to why <laughs> that's there. Um, but um, other than that, I think this is more of an honest list as to what things you might want to target if you're interested in particular clouds. This, this is just BS in my opinion. Um, and then we have another list here. So this is a fellow here, uh, Gavin Paul, Javin Paul, and you know, interested to see what they're listing. And I think this might be just of a personal opinion uh, in terms of what they think it is. Uh, they have the associate, they have the cloud practitioner, it's all AWS. So this says top certifications and it's listing all AWS first and then Microsoft second and then Google third. So this, this list I, I would not really recommend if you're talking about the order of importance. They might just be saying, hey, here's 10 things, 10 certs that I would consider the most popular and the order doesn't matter. But um, I definitely would not go with their list, um, definitely for the order that it's in. Uh, Pluralsight, this is not really a list of most popular. This is about um, based on salary. And so that stuff is really interesting. This stuff is averaged out. You really, really have to look at your area because these ranges are not bad, but like Canada versus the US versus like DC versus Austin, Texas, 
in the States versus the EU. Totally different. Totally, totally different. So, you know, this is not very useful for somebody. Like if you're in Nigeria and you're reading this, this is not useful for you. It's not even useful to know exactly where that, that salary range is, right? So you really do have to have uh, better research uh, based on locality. Um, and nobody does that because it takes time and effort to compile that information. And if you're not from that region or area, you don't even know if the numbers that are being uh, displayed are actually accurate. Uh, so you, it definitely requires somebody with personal knowledge of those areas. Um, you know, like one thing that's very interesting, like uh, Nijat, who is, and sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, but uh, I say, it, I'm just saying how it's, I, I see it, but, you know, I, I say, you know, certifications are not a guarantee of a job. Nijat's saying that in the EU that they're seeing that a lot of uh, job applications want to see certifications. That doesn't mean that you'll get the job if you have the certification. It just means that you, uh, it's, so you get your foot in the door for consideration. Um, and so, you know, that's not the same here in Canada. That's not the same here in parts of the U.S. Um, and so this is where locality plays. And we really do need uh, local, uh, local, local mentors or people that understand their areas and to share that information. That's why you don't see me making tons of stuff about um, salaries, about um, things like that, because... I'm very worried that I'm going to give you generic information and you are going to not be able to effectively use it because it's not applicable to you. Uh, and that, that is what's really frustrating for me in the industry. Uh, I would love to uh, correct that. I've said in the past that I would love it if, if there was some effort to um, collect localized information and have people uh, help us uh, figure that out. But that requires a lot of um, time and energy. And I am really focused on teaching you skills. Um, this is just another component. I would love to do this, but again, it's just no time, <laughs> no time. But, you know, hopefully this helps you understand my opinion about this, why I think the GCP Pro is on the top of the list. And it, again, if you were to go based on this information, you might be setting yourself out for failure or just wasting a lot of your time. And I just don't want you to waste your time, okay? So hopefully that was valuable to you. We'll see you in the next one. Ciao.